Pearson told Fitzgerald that she could not understand how she would explain this episode to her son, daughter, and husband. Okay. So, what she has told here, we just completed here also that uh, Pearson also told, Mrs. Fitzgerald told Pearson that you must not be so soft with your family members, otherwise you are done. Now, Pearson told, Pearson was not sure that she could be strict with her family members, with her son, daughter, and husband. So she told that I will try not to, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Up to this, we completed last day. So let us continue afterwards. That Mrs. Fitzgerald, now they, uh, they have come to their original self. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald is telling. Those who have joined, I just, uh, I just want to tell that I'm, I'm starting reading, I have started reading from page number 51. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald, they have not had as long as I would like to have given them. Another hour or two rough treatment might have made it certain. Now, Fitzgerald told that she was not very much satisfied. Why? Because Fitzgerald had given rough treatment to Doris, Cyril, and George Pearson. But she was not satisfied because she wanted to give another one or two hours, two hours more rough treatment to them. But on request of Mrs. Pearson, she had to change back to their self. So she was telling that another hour or two's rough treatment might have made it certain. Now at this Pearson told, I am sure they will do better now, though I don't know how I am going to explain. Now Pearson told that I feel they would do better now, means they would behave better in a better way with me. I feel that they would give respect to me as that was the problem, that Pearson's problem was that, that um, uh, the son, daughter and even husband did not give any respect to her and her condition was just like a maid in the family. So Pearson also hoped that uh, there might be a development in the situation in her position, uh, that his position might be uplifted in, the, in her family. Now, she was thinking that though I don't know how I'm going to explain, you know, Pearson was so much volatile character, so much soft-minded, you know, humble, that she, uh, and, uh, she could not understand that if she explained all these to her family members, then her position uh, would be oust. Here she told that though I don't know how I'm going to explain. Now Fitzgerald told severely, Fitzgerald got very serious and told, don't you start any explaining or apologizing or you are done for. At this Fitzgerald, when uh, actually Pearson told that I could not understand how I should explain all these to my family members, at this Fitzgerald warned her that you must not do any explanation or apologizing to them. If you did do this, then you are done for, means you are finished. You are finished. Your condition would be worse than the earlier also. That M Mrs. Pearson told, sorry, Mrs. Fitzgerald warned this to Pearson. That if you do any explanation, if you have told, if you have explained all these that what had happened with you and the rough treatment that you have given to them, if you tell them that it was not actually you, it was me or it was Mrs. Fitzgerald, uh, then your condition will be worse there, uh, uh, from earlier. So you must not do any all this. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald, uh, Pearson told with spirit, it's all right for you, Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald, after all, they are not your husband and children. Now, this is uh, some sort of, you know, ungratefulness from Pearson's um, side. Because why Mrs. Fitzgerald has taken all these liabilities of giving the rough treatment uh, to the family members of Mrs. Pearson, only to uplift her condition in her family. But now, when Mrs. Fitzgerald was warning to uh, Pearson that you must not do any explanation, you must not uh, go for apologizing to your family members, otherwise your condition would be very poor in that uh, family. And at this, Mrs. Pearson told, oh, you could not understand because it's not your family members and they are not your children, so how could you understand? You know, it, it, you know uh, if uh, the question comes that uh, 
Yes, um, right now, uh, give a character sketch of Mrs. Pierce and a uh, character sketch of Mrs. Pierce, and then we should mention this also that there was some sort of uh, un there sort some sort of uh, selfishness, uh, you know, attitude or selfishness characteristics also there in in her character, and this is the instance that it it sounds like uh, you know very much selfish that uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald had done all this for her only, and she is telling yes, you cannot understand because this is not your family members, this is not your husband and children. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald, impressively, now Mrs. Fitzgerald wants to impress Mrs. actually wants to influence uh, Mrs. Uh, Pearson. Now, told now. You listen to me, no, Fitzgerald is telling to Pearson. You admitted yourself you were spoiling them and they did not appreciate you. Any apologies, any explanations, and you will be straight back where you were. Now, Fitzgerald, you know, Fitzgerald was very, very practical minded. And, and, and from that practical attitude, Fitzgerald told this to Pearson. You see, you admitted me, uh, you accepted the fact that you could not control your family members and they had all been spoiled. They became all spoiled. Now, if you start this explanation, if you uh, actually start apologizing, if you ask for apologizing to them, then your condition and uh, actually your condition will be straight back where you were. You were in a very pathetic condition, in a pitiful condition, because none of your family members would give you any type of respect. So if you do the same, if you explained, if you have told everything what had happened so far, then your condition would be the same like this. I'm warning you, dear, just give them a look, a tone of voice, now and then, now and again, to suggest you might be tough with them if you want it to be, and it ought to work. Anyhow, we can taste it now. Here, Fitzgerald was telling this. Some um, uh, Fitzgerald was really giving some real suggestion to Pearson that how to behave with your family members. That Fitzgerald told that you must give a look to them, so that uh, you must create that kind of atmosphere. You you must make them understand that if the situation becomes, uh, you know, a situation is uh, getting out of your control, then you could be very much uh, rough, you could be very much tough with, uh, with them as well as you have behaved with them. And you must have a tone of voice, that authoritative tone, you must, you know, supply that authoritative tone to them. And not only that, you must suggest them that you might be very tough if situation demands, you know, and uh, it ought to work. And uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, Fitzgerald told, but uh, whatever uh, situation they were in, uh, the way I have behaved with them, I, I feel it ought to work, it should work. Now, Fitzgerald also told that we, we, may, we, we may test it. Now, whether uh, the, you know, attitude of your son, daughter, and husband, whether it would change or not, we should uh, try it, we should, you know, check it whether, because after receiving this rough treatment, Fitzgerald told that she expected that there might be a great difference there in their behavior, so we should test whether uh, their attitude would change or not. Now Pearson is telling how. Pearson did not have any idea that how what uh, Fitzgerald was telling, so Pearson told how, how would we test now Fitzgerald. Well, what is it you would like them to do that they don't do? Stop at home for once? Now Fitzgerald told, okay, you tell me that what do you want that your family members, you want your family members to do? Though your family members, they themselves don't want to do that, but you want that they should do it. Do you want that they should stop at home? Pearson, yes. Pearson told, yes, I always want that my family members should stop at home, should um, you know, give time to me, and give me a hand with supper. Give me a hand means just help me in uh, preparing my dinner that uh, Fitzgerald, uh, sorry, Pearson told that I want. Now Fitzgerald, anything you'd like them to do and that you'd enjoy whether they do or not. Now Fitzgerald was telling again to Pearson that do you want that anything they should do and you should enjoy it, whether they would enjoy it or not, that doesn't matter. You enjoy and you want that your family members should do for you and you'd enjoy it. Anything, uh, was there something like this? Now, Pearson hesitating. Pearson could not actually 
could not find out yes what would can be because uh, she had been accustomed with that ignorance attitude from her uh, you know family members and as if she was accustomed with that ignorance attitude from the family members because she had been uh, you know treated something like this they the the the, uh, the son the daughter they did not listen to her the the husband did not give any regard to her so as if she was accustomed so she was hesitating and then well yes i like a nice game of rummy but of course i hardly ever had one except at christmas so uh, you know rummy is a card game uh, this time you know uh, in present moment uh, we can feel that uh, lots of people are getting lots of money by playing rummy isn't it but sometimes we get the ad in uh, television also in uh, you when surfing internet you can get that ad of rummy also so uh, here uh, that uh, uh, pearson told that i want to play a nice game of rummy but i uh, but uh, uh, i i like a nice game of rummy of course uh, i hardly ever have one except uh, christmas so uh, actually uh, pearson told that she liked to play a card game of rummy but she did not get the chance to play rummy only only one day she got the chance to play rummy and that is christmas so question may come as you know lots of mcq would come in your exam so uh, on which day pearson got the chance of playing rummy with her family members it's only on christmas so so uh, pearson told that i i want to play rummy with my family members now pearson getting up pearson was sitting there got up stood up that will do then now she got the point that how she would test whether there was any difference in in their behavior or not now that will do then now she moves towards the door left and then turns but remember now she went towards the door because she wanted to call the other family members in before this is the final warning that she was giving to mrs pitzeral that she went to the door she was about to open the door because she wanted to call the other family members to come in because she wanted to test whether that rap treatment had already brought the differences in their behavior and all so still she she went near the door and still she turned from there and uh, for the final time she was telling but remember keep firm or you have had it or you have had it means you have you'd got on that you you you'd go straight to that position where you were now she opens the door calling hey you can come in now oh, this is rough and tough it's like hey you can come in now that she actually asked the family members coming away from the door and moving right slightly quietly but remember remember a firm hand so when the family members were coming in the line you know the husband the son daughter they were all entering the room and still uh, fitzgerald was telling and uh, she came uh, with the side of pierce and and she was telling and that with a firm hand remember remember a firm hand I mean, you must be very firm now george doris and cyril file in through the doorway looking apprehensively at mrs pierce file in means they came in a line you I know mean, apprehensively means um, with getting afraid of afraid of i'm just off to let you enjoy yourself it's a real telling i'm just off means i'm going out and i wish you that you should all enjoy everyone once he was telling this to pearson the family looks anxiously at mrs pearson who smiles much relieved the smile back at her and all the family members son daughter husband they were looking very anxiously because they were very much afraid of mrs pearson because uh, why not because for the last one or two hours the rap treatment they have received they were so much astonished and they were they, they started to be afraid of mrs pearson now with that look you know um, they they were looking at her and mrs pearson you know looked back uh, smiled at them and they they got relieved they were they they were very much relieved that uh, at least uh, their mother uh, actually smiled at them now doris anxiously yes mother doris that doris you know the doris that girl who did not give any respect to her mother who all the time ordered her mother as if it was a maid now that doris was asking with anxiously yes mother now mrs pierce is smiling seeing that you don't want to go out i tell you what i thought we would do a uh, pearson told actually pearson was trying her best trying her best to be very strict with them 
Dosi was smiling time to time. So Pearson told her that uh, it's good that uh, I'm saying that you, you, you don't want to go out this evening. So it's good uh, looking, uh, you know, uh, so I tell you what I ought, uh, what I thought you would do. So I'm telling that uh, what I want you to do. I'm thinking, uh, I'm telling you. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald giving a final warning. Remember, Fitzgerald was still there. Fitzgerald hasn't gone yet. Fitzgerald told again to Pearson, remember, what remember? You must be very much strict with them. Otherwise, your condition would be the same as it was before. Now, Pearson nodding, then looking sharply at the family. Pearson also nodding. Uh, yes, she, she understood what, um, what Pearson supposed uh, that she, won't, she should do. Now, as if it's a great test for her also. I, you know, it's very tough. You know, when we are uh, we're discussing the text from the very beginning, you know, that on a, on a certain day, you, 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 if, you are, uh, if you want that your junior, your students, your children should give you respect, then you should, you know, firm, uh, you, you should make your character from the very beginning. It's not that on the very fine morning that you become uh, actually very lovable among them. Uh, they do not have any fear towards you. And on a fine morning, you hope that everybody would give. Uh, it would be very much you know, afraid of you. They would give respect to you. They would obey you. Uh, you know, they would follow you. Then um, it would be very tough because uh, if you really want, you should start it from the beginning. That Mrs. Fitzgerald, uh, sorry, Mrs. Pearson could not do. Uh, since the childhood, since uh, the, the childhood of, of her children, uh, actually she became so much um, open to them and uh, she did not treat them in her way. And that is the result that, that we discussed, that, that is the problem with Mrs. Pearson. Now, uh, here also that Pearson told that uh, Mrs. Pearson nodding and looking. No objections, I hope Pearson is telling to our family members that uh, you don't have any objection, I feel, because I want you uh, to stay, and I'm telling you what you should do this evening. Now, George, humbly, uh, no, mother, whatever you say, no, George. He was telling his wife his mother, he was so much confused, and he also got uh, the rough treatment from his wife, so he was also very much scared, very much afraid. So they were very much anxious, that suggests so that how anxious they were. She so telling, no, mother, whatever you say, George was telling this. Now Pearson, smiling. I thought we'd have a nice family game of rummy, and then you children could get the supper ready while I have a talk with your father. Now here mother told that I want to play a nice game of rummy, all of us, and then I would, uh, uh, I would have a nice talk to your father, I would gossip with your father, and you too would prepare tonight's supper, tonight's dinner. Okay, this was this was uh, you know that that is the wish that uh, Mrs. Pearson told these uh, to our family members. That uh, at first he wanted to play. The question may come: What Mrs. Pearson wanted our family members to do that evening? that uh, she wanted to play a nice game of rummy at first and then she told her she also wished that her children uh, son and doris uh, uh, you know doris and cyril uh, they would actually uh, prepare that night's dinner uh, while she would talk to her husband this was her you know desire now george firmly suits me firmly george is saying suits me miss yes i, I accept it suits me now he looks challengingly at the children. What about you too? Now George, you know, as if George has come to the side of uh, his wife because George was very, uh, you know, uh, he had been insulted by his wife and he was very much scared of his wife as well. So he was telling to uh, his uh, son and daughter, yes, that suits me, no problem. Uh, from my point, from my point of view, there is no problem, I accepted it, but what is your, uh, what do you want to tell? What about you too? Means uh, George wanted to know what uh, uh, his son and daughter actually wanted to do. Now, Cyril hastily, yes, uh, that's all right. See, that's Cyril. That boy, 20, 21 years old, uh, he would never obey uh, his mother, but uh, now he was so much afraid of um, his mother. Now, readily he told her, no problem. Um, yes, that's all right. Uh, George is. Uh, Hesitating. Uh, well, uh, I actually Doris had something uh, to tell 
uh, something else. Dorit has something to tell to her mother. So she was uh, hesitating and she told, okay, well, uh, well, I, uh, Mrs. Pearson, sorry, not Mrs. Pearson. Now she was, um, you know, practicing to be very sharp, to be, to be strict with them. She told, what? Speak up? What? Speak up? Uh, Pearson told this to Doris. And immediately Doris, uh, oh, I think it should be lovely. So Doris had some uh, different idea. But Dorit uh, might have told, no, I could not do that. Uh, it would be better if you prepared the supper and all this. Now, when mother asked me with a strict voice and with, uh, with a very severe voice, that yes, what? Speak up. What do you want to tell? Immediately, the daughter accepted. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it would be lovely. It would be lovely. Now, Pearson smiling. Goodbye, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Come again soon. Now, uh, Mrs. Fitz actually, Mrs. Pearson told this to Fitzgerald because Mrs. Pearson actually uh, she should be very much grateful to Mrs. Fitzgerald, isn't it? Because the position uh, she got today that all have um, all uh, you know uh, husband, uh, son, daughter. Now they were afraid of her. They were listening to uh, her order. It's only had become possible because of Mrs. Fitzgerald. So she was telling, "Thank you, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Come again soon, uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald." Yes, dear. Night all. Have a nice time. You know, this is the final time. Mrs. Fitzgerald told, wish them that good night. Have a nice time. And have a nice time. No, Fitzgerald went out. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald exists left, and the family clustered around mother as the curtain falls. And Mrs. Fitzgerald went out of the room, and all the family members, they came, they stood around the mother, and the curtains fall. So that is the end of this drama. Mother's Day. It's a long one, but ultimately we had completed it. It's a nice story. And, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, at the pre-reading, uh, at the very beginning of that class, uh, we discussed that uh, the story is all about the position of our mother uh, in our family. And really, it's a nice one. It's a different kind of story. Because I, I, couldn't, uh, I, I, I couldn't remember that any story over there in your class 10 syllabus or even in class 12 syllabus that there is uh, any, in class, uh, any, any story about exchanging of souls. So this is, uh, in, uh, from that point, it's a different story. I feel you have enjoyed. Now, a few questions over there. That this play written in 1950s is a humorous and satirical depiction of the status of mother in the family. What are the issues it raises? Do you think it's, it, it uh, caricatures these issues or do you think that the problems it raises are genuine? How does the play resolve the issues? Do you agree with these resolutions? I, I will try. I will tell you, I will suggest you try to uh, uh, write down this answer of your own. Uh, uh, it would be better if you can write down of your own because, uh, you know, preparing note and memorizing note and then going to exam hall, uh, it's a stupid idea. Uh, I would never entertain, I would never tell this to do that. Uh, it's better that uh, if you have that, I feel you are having the capability, if you, have it, you are having the quality, just uh, a problem is that, that sometimes you may not recognize yourself that um, how much capable you are of uh, writing the note of your own. So I would suggest that write the note of your own and it would be the best answer. Okay, so today it's time up. Uh, thank you for What she has written. Missal, Sarin in literature, Hornbill, Father to Son, The Adventure, and in Snapshot, The God of the Only World, The Tale of Milan City are deleted in the syllabus. Yes, Missal, for your kind information, I'm telling that this has been deleted. Okay, this has been deleted. So, no, no need to read this. Only one chapter uh, we are left with, that is uh, chapter number seven. Chapter number seven, birth. So next day, we must start this chapter. There is a last chapter from Snapshot, birth. So next day, we will start it. And for today, it's goodbye. And thank you for being with me. Thank you.